I have a quick question to kick this review off today. How many of you owned a Where's Waldo book when you were growing up? And if you're not familiar with what those books are, essentially you were trying to find this cute little character Waldo through a crowd of different people in different scenes. You'd also have to find various other objects. Well, you wouldn't have to, it was optional, but there was a checklist and it was a whole lot of fun. I feel like we all encountered these books at one point or another throughout our childhood, or maybe you have kids now and they like to mess around with them. But that is what I couldn't stop thinking about as I played through this game. Welcome everybody to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe, and today we are reviewing Labyrinth City on the Nintendo Switch. In this title, you'll be playing, as you guessed it, Detective Pierre, going up against his sworn enemy, Mr. X. Why does that sound so familiar? Maybe you Sega fans will catch that one. So what's happened here is that the evil Mr. X has stolen from a local museum a maze stone, and now you have to travel across the world in order to track Mr. X down and retrieve it and return it to the museum. The story is really simple, it's quite cute, it's told through some comic book like cutscenes. They look very similar to the overall graphical presentation of the rest of the game, and again a Where's Waldo book, but no, I thought it was endearing enough, sweet, charming, and cute. You'll also be encountering a few different characters across your journeys. Most of the dialogue will take place in comic book style bubbles. Not a whole lot of text in this game and most of these cutscenes that you'll come across will occur between the game's 10 different levels. So the story is cute enough, but how does the game actually play? Is it any fun? Yes, it is. Essentially, each map acts as a maze that you have to find your way through. The main goal of the game is to find the different characters and advance to the next level, but there's all these little side objectives that you can partake in and also also some objects that are scattered across the different maps. You can interact with these objects to get various animations. Most of them are for fun, but there are a few collectible items. So in order to 100% each map, you will have to do a good amount of exploration. But finding your way to the next character in order to advance is simple too, because the game generally does a really good job of pointing you in the right direction. All you'll really be doing is moving in this game. There's no attacking, there's no enemies trying to kill you. So this is a very cozy, relaxing style game game. Oh, one other thing I do want to mention is that there are actually a few very light puzzles scattered across the maps as well. Not every map, but most of them feature one. For example, you might come across some musicians and they'll play musical notes in a particular order. You'll then have to interact with those musicians in that order in order to solve the puzzle and earn yourself a little bit of a trophy. I really welcomed the simplicity of this game. It was enjoyable to not be stressed out while playing something. And I think what really is captivating here is the art style, which is again so reminiscent of a childhood book. It's really beautiful, colorful, vibrant. Animations are fantastic. It all feels lived in, realized. It is a shame then that I did come across some issues on the Nintendo Switch version. There was some slowdown from time to time depending on how many characters would be in a particular scene. That was a little bit of a drag. I found the overall movement of your character was just a tad slow in general in this game, but not too big of a deal, but overall the Switch version performed admirably, but again a few technical hiccups outside of that slowdown that I mentioned. My game did sadly crash once, and a few times Pierre would just move on his own without me even pushing in a direction. So yeah, a few hiccups as could be expected on a Nintendo Switch port. Sadly, that's become a trend. I did get one patch during my time with this review, so hopefully they're aware of these issues, the developer is working on them, and things will get smoothed out even more. If you're wondering about the handheld mode, it was just fine. It actually looks really sharp on the smaller screen. This game will look beautiful regardless of how you're playing it though. Each illustrated map is high definition, so I didn't notice any sort of washed out images or anything like that. Looks really great and it also sounds fantastic. There's a lot of different instrumentation going on here. Nylon guitar, lots of different musical compositions here that really open up the more you play the game and the more you advance through it. The songs would get more and more complex and sort of build. So I really like the soundtrack of this game. There is no voice acting. I didn't feel like the game needed it. It's quite a magical experience. The presentation is excellent across the board. If you're looking for a relaxing, cozy game to snuggle up with and enjoy at your own leisure, look no further than this one. I really love the art. I like the gameplay. It's simple. It's enjoyable. It's relaxing. And the soundtrack is 
fantastic. So I actually highly recommend checking this one out. Do know that there's no action, there's no violence in this game, nothing like that. It's not going to be the longest game in the world. If you want to collect everything, you can get a few more hours out of it. But I would say each map, there's 10 in total takes around 20 to 30 minutes or so, maybe longer if you really want to go out and explore every nook and cranny. So great game, overall highly recommended, colorful, magical, check it out. The Switch version has its issues, but still a decent way to play a fantastic title. Thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We'd now like to take a moment to thank our great indie warriors. Mitchell Hall, Kevalo, Bunny, Bill Tikas, Christian Cruz, Strict9, Rosie Syntex, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, Falco, Lombardi, C. Coil, Skeptism, Jen Rose, Jesse, and Julian Kolbis. Thank you for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, be sure to head down to the description box below. Let's stop the echo chamber once and for all and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.